Hello guys, Oscar Hotel 8, Sierra Tango November here from Survival Tech Nord. After the last video on this topic, there were lots of questions in the comments about how to integrate the Genison Charge Controller with the Buddy Pole Power Plus. So today we're talking about making those connections between the solar panels and solar charge controller and our grid tied shack power supply. If you stick with me, I'll tell you all about it. You are listening to the emergency broadcast systems. This station broadcasts emergency news and official information on the air for a sign area. So as mentioned in the first video on this subject, the Buddy Pole Power Plus doesn't have an integrated solar charge controller, but that's actually okay. So very many operators were asking how I was able to make the connections from my solar panels, Guinness on charge controller to the solar storage system and the Buddy Pole Power Plus. So I went ahead and made a simplified version of my system so that we can make this video making everything all clear. So this time the system is a lot less abstract. We have the power supply, we have the Buddy Pole Power Plus, we have the Genison GV Boost Charge Controller, and we have a 20 amp hour 4S2P lithium iron phosphate battery. Other than the capacity of the lithium iron phosphate battery pack, all of these components are just the same as it is with my solar storage system. Having everything set up on the bench this way, we have the luxury of being able to see each component and its individual connections. So let's start by disabling the charging from the Buddy Pole Power Plus. This will allow us to remove the solar generator from the system. So once we've disabled the charging, we can go ahead and remove the power leads between the Buddy Pole Power Plus and the 576 watt hour solar generator. Now to make this work, I've created a Y cable. One end of that Y cable will go to the battery output on the Buddy Pole Power Plus. The opposite end will go to the lithium iron phosphate battery, in this case, our 20 amp hour lithium iron phosphate pack. And that extension cable there, the smaller wire, will go to the battery input on our Genison solar charge controller. So let's go ahead and start plugging those in. Again, with charging disabled on the Buddy Pole Power Plus, we'll plug one end of that into the Buddy Pole Power Plus. The second end, or opposing end, will be plugged into the 20 amp hour lithium iron phosphate pack. Now we can bring in the Genison GV Boost Charge Controller and connect that extension to the battery input of the Genison. The final connection will be the leads from our solar panels into the solar input of the Genison GV Boost. Honestly, there's a couple of different ways we can utilize all of this functionality we've just wired up. First, we can look at the way my station is wired up. My solar panels are the primary source of energy for my ham radio station. But if we have a bunch of cloudy, miserable days, I can always click on that power supply through the Buddy Pole Power Plus to augment the power coming in from my solar panels. So the power supply is simply a backup for the battery and solar power system. Did you see how we just did that? The bridge between the standalone islands out in the ocean is the Buddy Pole Power Plus. The Buddy Pole Power Plus is the glue between the solar power system, that means the battery and the solar panels, and the power supply, which is usually grid tied. So whichever part of the system fails, whether it's cloudy days and no solar, or whether it's the power supply and a grid down scenario, you're always going to have power for your system. Now another benefit of this configuration is charging regardless of if the grid is up or down. Even with the grid down and an emergency communications or grid down scenario, we still have the ability to charge our batteries through our solar panels. I kind of look at it like this. What's the point of having emergency communications or a battery backup if your battery will ultimately fail anyway? There's no law or rule that says a grid down scenario is only going to last the amount of time based on the capacity of your battery. So really, it makes absolute sense to augment your station with a small solar power system to charge up your backup battery. But the opposite is also true. 
It makes absolute sense to have a generator to power a power supply or the grid to power your power supply to act as a backup charging mechanism if for some reason your solar power system fails to keep up with the demands of your station. So now we're going to simulate a grid down scenario. We're going to shut down the power coming to the power supply to see how the Buddy Pole Power Plus manages this cut in power. We can also take a look at how the radios and computers handle the handover from grid power from the power supply to the battery storage system and solar charging. For this test, the power supply is the main power source for the system. The Guinness on Charge controller is simply augmenting the battery storage with the solar panel that's mounted on the tower. If everything goes well, the system will switch over to battery backup and the Guinness on Charge controller will start charging or topping up that battery. Let's shut down that power supply. So almost instantaneously, the Guinness on GV Boost charge controller takes over charging for the battery storage system. The only change in the system was changing from a green LED saying all was okay to a red LED saying we've lost grid power. Well, during the switchover, my radios continued to work properly, my computer continued to work properly, and the only noticeable thing on the Buddy Pole Power Plus was that switching indicating a loss in grid power. So from this test, we can say definitively the battery backup system is actually working perfectly. So actually, this isn't the only way we can use the functionality of this system. I think many of us would like to save money by powering our ham radio stations from our solar power systems primarily. Well, as you see, the system is actually running off of solar power right now. But what if we had a series of cloudy days or bad weather where we couldn't generate enough solar power to top up the battery backup? By keeping our power supply connected to the grid, we can turn it on when we need it to give that solar power system and battery backup the necessary charge it needs to catch up on cloudy days. Now by turning that power supply back on, the power supply along with the Buddy Pole Power Plus will start the charging process to our battery backup system. Everything attached to the DC outputs and the USB ports on the Power Plus are now getting their power directly from the power supply. This allows the power supply and the Guinnesson and solar panel out on the tower to work together to charge up the battery backup system. We'll be able to tell when the 20 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery is fully charged because the Power Plus will say 14.3 volts and the Guinnesson charge controller will have a solid green LED. At this point, we can turn that power supply off again. So now I've gone back to my standard configuration. You can see the Buddy Pole Power Plus is connected to my solar generator up in the upper right hand corner. The Guinness on Charge controller is actually inside the solar generator, which caused the confusion in the first video. But now that you've all seen the individual components of the system, it's easy to understand how it all goes together and how it's working. There's definitely a few different ways we could have put this system together, but this is the way I've done it, and that's what I wanted to share with you. Now with summertime slowly arriving at 65 degrees north, it's time for us to get back to some off-grid and portable power projects. Last year we built the 576 watt hour solar generator and spent an awful lot of time off-grid with the Powerfilm solar solar panels. In a few of our upcoming videos, we're going to remain focused on off-grid and portable power. However, the projects we'll do this year will be heavily focused on off-grid field communications. This will include portable power solutions for popular radios like the Yaesu FT818, the Yaesu FT891, the Zygu G90, the Zygu X5105, and other popular radios like the ICOM IC705 and Elecraft KX2. This also reminds me, a few days before publishing this video, I published a blog post entitled Portable Power and Field Communications. This blog post opens a tough topic about why amateur radio manufacturers refuse to give us high capacity lithium ion batteries and fast charging and popular portable radios on the market today. So you want to take a look at that between this video and my next one. You'll find a link to that blog post in the description. 
Finally, I really hope this video provided you some new information about solar power, battery storage, and battery backups for ham radio or ham radio emergency communications. I do realize I ramble on, but I hope you'll find it useful anyway. Let me know what you think. If you're supporting this channel through Patreon, PayPal, or simply sharing my content, you're absolutely magnificent and I couldn't do it without you. For the rest of you, if you like what I'm doing, if you like the content I'm creating, leave me a comment and a thumbs up to let me know. And if it's not too much to ask, please share this video with someone or someplace where other operators might enjoy it. Rock and roll, guys. Thanks for watching. Ciao.